My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today is the 4th of July, Independence Day in the United States, and it's a day in which the gift of freedom is celebrated, is, is emphasized in a special way. And given the international audience of this podcast, I won't focus on the history of this date, but I do think it's a good day to pray about freedom, which is one of the greatest gifts that we have been given. It's part of our being made in the image and likeness of God. God is free, and He has made human beings also free. Freedom is absolutely beautiful. And at the same time, it's dangerous. <laughs> Why? Well, because we can use it incorrectly. We can choose evil. We can choose to sin. Which is really actually not being free. It ends up enslaving us. But we want to emphasize the positive, of course, that we can choose the good. We can do the good thing. We can, we can love. And to do the good thing and to love can be hard sometimes. It can be against the grain. Not always, of course, but, but frequently, perhaps. And God wants us to choose to love Him. To love Him because we want to. To, because him, to love Him because we know that He loves us. He doesn't want to force us. Imagine you were back in sixth grade, middle school, and um, and that you invited someone over to your house, you know, to, to hang out, to play, someone that you considered a friend or that you wanted to become better friends with. And this person accepts the invitation, comes over, but then later you discover that that person came over not because that not because that person wanted to but because his or her parents made her go or made him go and that would hurt right if we found that out that would hurt yeah the person was there but that person wasn't there because that person wanted to be there they'd been forced they weren't there freely God loves us so much and he leaves us free to say yes or to say no to him. Let us tell Jesus, Jesus, I want to use my freedom well. I want to use my freedom to love you. There's a scene in Jesus' life, there's a moment in Jesus' life when he's approached by a, by a young man it turns out to be very wealthy and he asks a big question. He says, Jesus, he says, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus responds by going over the commandments. Telling him, that, well, you keep, keep the commandments. And then he, he, he goes over some of them. And then this young man says, well, I've kept all of those commandments since my youth. Which is pretty good, right? I mean, to be able to say that we've kept the commandments since we were kids it would probably mean that we're a pretty good person, right? And then, after after hearing this from this young man, that he has kept all these commandments since his youth, Jesus said, If you wish to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And then we read in the gospel that the young man went away sad because he had many possessions. He didn't say yes to that invitation. He freely said no. 
He said no, and what did he... And he went away sad, not happy. Even though in the end, what's he looking for? He's looking for happiness, but he can't let go. And he goes away sad. God was giving him a special invitation, and he said no. Sometimes doing God's will is going to be difficult. Obeying his commandments. Saying the truth when others are attacking it. To fulfill my daily duties. Right? But to to do the good there, right? To obey God is to exercise our freedom the way we ought. To do the good. And the greatest thing we can do with our freedom is to love. And to love God is to do what He wants. That's what to do the good is. That's what freedom is for. Jesus, you were free. And you freely obeyed, even unto death, death on a cross. Once, about 30 years ago, there was a man, a wealthy man, um, practicing Catholic. He would go to Mass every day, in fact. And, uh, and this man was kidnapped one day, leaving Mass. And he was, he was kept in a cell for 257 days. It's about eight and a half months until he actually escaped. And he wrote a book about it, and he did many interviews and wrote articles in newspapers. It's quite a story, really. And um, and he talks about how in the first four months, so the first half, basically, of his being imprisoned, his being held captive... He, he talks about how he was very depressed. He got very sad. He got angry with God. He stopped praying. And, uh, and had, a, had a rebellion, really, against God. And this lasted about four months until there was a very important moment. It was a holiday of some kind. And his, uh, his captors invited him to ask for whatever he wanted. And he said, well, I would like a, a glass of whiskey. And so they brought him whiskey. And he's about to take a drink. And he was feeling sorry for himself and thinking, well, this is the first time I get something that I actually want, you know. And, uh, and he's, about to, he, he's about to take a sip of that drink when he hears a voice. And the voice says, give it up for me. And he immediately realizes it's God who's talking to him. And his, immediate, and his first reaction is, no, I don't want to give this up. But then he hears it again, give it up for me. And after moments of interior struggle, he decides to obey. And he pours out the whiskey into the drain. And he says that was, that was the turning point for him during that time. That he became free again where he decided freely to give something up for God. He decided freely to obey. And he decided that even though he didn't understand why God had let all this happen to him, he said, well, if this is your will, if you've let this happen, it must be for the good. And he began to pray again. And he began to say many times a day, may God's will be done, amen, amen. May God's will be done, amen, amen. And he, he made a schedule as well as he could, and he would, he would keep it. He would pray every day. He would plan his escape, which eventually he was able to do, actually. He would pray for his captors. And he became happy. Even in that situation of, of external enslavement, really, right? He couldn't couldn't even leave he actually became happy because he accepted God's will it doesn't mean it was he wasn't suffering of course he was suffering but he knew God was by his side 
So no matter what our situation, even when it seems there is no external freedom, we can exercise that internal freedom by saying God's will be done. Of course, it leads to external actions most of the time, right? It's time to get up. God's will be done. It's time to wash the dishes. God's will be done. God, help me do it. It's time to go to work. God's will be done. It's time to watch a movie. God's will be done. Thank you, God. It's time to play basketball. God's will be done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this great gift. It's time for a barbecue. Thank you, Jesus. God's will be done. Jesus, thank you for dying freely for me. Help me give my life to you by loving you freely, by loving you with my whole heart and by obeying your will in every moment. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.